How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the shop or welcome if you're new here. Today I am going to show you how I make these magnetic American flag bottle openers. So these things are very similar in construction to the flags, the crosses, um, some other videos that you've seen, and a lot of the different things that I do. It's simply one by material, so you can either use a one by two or you can rip a bigger one by board down into one and a half inch stripes to make a one by two. And uh, these are 13 inches long, so you can actually make these out of scraps, much like the crosses, which is great from a material cost perspective, right? Uh, the less it costs, the bigger your profit margins are when you sell them. So before we get started with that, um, I would like to ask you to please like and hit the bell icon if uh, you want to get notified every time one of my videos comes out. Uh, comment if you want to. But most importantly, please subscribe. Um, currently where the, the channel is at in its life, uh, the magic number is a thousand subscribers. So to validate what I do and to, you know, keep me making these videos, uh, it would be very helpful if I could get uh, you guys to subscribe if you like the content. So if you're so inclined, please do that and I would really appreciate it. I will tell you that I have a lot more build content coming. I'm going to be making a lot of concealment boxes here coming up shortly in different sizes, different types, um, different applications. You'll see there's three or four videos on that that's coming up. So if that's something that interests you, then definitely subscribe and you know hit the bell notification so you get all the notifications when those come out. That being said, let's, uh, let's get started on this one. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make our stripes. There will be three one and a half by 14 inch stripes that make up each opener. I just happen to have some scrap one by twos laying around, so I'm using the miter saw here to cut them down to 14 inches. If you don't have any one by twos, or maybe you have some bigger one by boards laying around, you might have to rip them down to one and a half inches on the table saw, either before or after cutting them to length, whatever works for you. Here I'm just sorting my pieces to decide which sides will face up and which sides will face down because, well, that's just what I do. If you don't really care about the orientation of the boards, you can skip this step. Because I decided to biscuit join these, I'm marking them two inches down from each end on all three boards where I want to route my biscuit slot. Honestly, this step probably isn't necessary either but I just felt better about doing it this way because I didn't want my stripes to be uneven and I figured it might even give it just a tiny bit more strength in the glue up. That, and I have to find a reason to use this thing every once in a while in order to convince myself that I really did need it when I bought it. But uh, seriously, I do use it from time to time to line things up and will continue to do so until I really need a domino and am forced to go out and buy one. In any case, if you don't have a biscuit joiner or you just don't feel like doing it this way, I'm sure you would be fine with a normal edge grain glue up. I decided to go with one biscuit on each end just because and then sanded the three stripes flat using the biscuits to align everything. I hit them with 80 grit first and then smoothed them out with 220. And don't forget to get your ends and edges. This is my little Harbor Freight drill press. I'll definitely be upgrading this thing when I get the chance, but in the meantime, it does most of what I needed to do. Here, I've added a makeshift fence to it, and I'm using it first with a one inch Forstner bit to make a shallow depression for these metal keyhole supports. And then I'll use a one and two quarter inch Forstner bit to make the hole to hold the magnets that will catch the bottle tops. All right, so I'm trying to figure out well, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. So this little hole that I drilled for the hanger is like that. So the hanger sits flush in there. That's all good. The problem is, is that I need something deeper right here in the middle. So the screw can go in and out, but not so deep that it affects where these screws hold that on. So I've been playing around with a few different ideas 
involving drill bits and routers and uh, kind of ended up deciding I'm going to try to combine the two. So I tried to do one with my palm router and a 3 8 bit and um, I found that my hand routing skills are not the best and it uh, kind of went all over the place and um, I need this to be pretty accurate. So I decided to just put the router bit into the drill press and do it by hand. So uh, let's try it and see what happens. This is probably not the best way to do this, but it's, well, like, like everything else that I do, it's going to be my way, I guess. But uh, let's see how it works. Hopefully I won't kill myself. So I've already set this up. Well, that's more or less in the middle so my plan here is to go down a little ways i have the depth stop set um go down a little ways and kind of route it over and then do that once or twice or three times however many times it takes to make it work let's give it a shot see what happens Well, it's not, uh, it looks good. Looks like it should work. There's that. That doesn't impede my places for the screws. I think that's going to work. That's the way I'm going to do it. It's a little hairy, but not terribly so. All right, time to burn. I'm just using a propane torch to put a quick burn on these stripes before staining. This is the exact same process that I describe in detail in my how to burn video. So if you haven't seen that, I'll add a link to it in the description below. I highly recommend you check it out as there are some really good tips, tricks, and techniques in it that will be very helpful if you're not already experienced in doing this. And since I already have that video, it doesn't make sense for me to make this one any longer than it needs to be by going through all of that again. So check it out. All right, so the next thing we need to do is stain. I'm marking all the boards at four and a half inches from the top, which is the end with the keyhole in order to separate the union from the stripes and I'll use razor blades to separate the stain lines like I always do. Again, this is covered in other videos, but I will be releasing a staining instruction video right after this one that will give you all the details that you will need from how to get the colors I'm using here because you can't just go in and ask for them anymore. You have to know what to tell them in order to get these colors because they've technically been discontinued. Um, as well as to show you how to apply the new formula Minwax Stain. They call it improved, but it is definitely not an improvement. Um, it can be really challenging and infuriating to apply if you don't know the trick to do it. If you follow the directions on the can, it will drive you literally insane. I'm still using the old formula here, so it looks much easier than it actually is now. In any case, be sure to subscribe so that you will be notified when that video is released because these colors really are the best for these wooden flags, especially the blue. You won't find another like it. All right, moving on. The next step is to glue your boards up. Just apply a thin film of glue to the edges and inside the biscuit grooves if you're using them. Clamp your three pieces together and then use a damp cloth and a pick if necessary to clean up any squeeze out. After about an hour or so, you should be able to release the clamps and continue working. After that, I'm applying my logo to the back of the boards with a self-inking stamp that I have and then applying the finish. My go-to finish of choice for these flag builds is clear lacquer and I just use the rattle cans that they sell at Home Depot. It's so easy to apply, dries in minutes, doesn't need sanding between coats and is very easy to repair if you mess it up. I love it and it looks great. And the last things to do are to add the stars and hardware. I just used a pick to help start the screws for the keyhole hanger and screwed it on and then set the magnets in the hole with CA glue, but I'm sure hot glue or epoxy would be just as good, if not better. I did use two magnets instead of one, which adds a little extra cost, 
but I just wasn't happy with the performance of a single magnet. With two, several caps will accumulate on the front before they start to fall past, as opposed to only a couple staying on with one magnet. I got all of this hardware from Amazon, and I will link it all, as well as some of the other things you saw me use to make these bottle openers, in the description below. I should also mention that I have joined the Amazon affiliate program, so if you use those links to buy anything, the channel will earn a small commission from Amazon at absolutely no additional cost to you. It's a good way for you to support the channel as there really is a lot of time and effort that goes into putting these videos together and it would be greatly appreciated. So next, I add the stars to the union and I just did this in a very similar way to how I do my flags and crosses. I forgot to film myself burning and staining the stars, but it's exactly the same way I burn the stars on my flags and crosses, so check out those videos if you want to see that. Uh, if you stained your center stripe white, you'll also want to stain your stars to match, because they'll look funny if you don't. Basically, I just measured out the spacing of the stars in a way that looked good to me, and then used the pick to put a small hole in the wood where the center of the star would go, and then glued the stars down with CA glue. You can also use wood glue to do this, but it's a little more messy and time consuming because you'll end up having to pick away all of the squeeze out from around each star, but you can do it either way. Finally, we'll just add the bottle opener by placing it in a place that looks good, using the pick again to help start the screws and then screw it on. And there you have it. This is a cool little project that you can make with scraps like the crosses. And if you batch them out, you can make a pretty good profit off of them. And once again, we've come to the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so because that's the most important thing that you can do at this point to support this channel and ensure continued content. And I'd really appreciate it. I've got a lot more build videos coming your way soon to include a few different concealment boxes, so stay tuned for that. If you're still here, thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe and happy woodworking. I'll see you next time.